Here is a problem from the Baltic Wave Maps Contest 1995. Show that for the number sine of 18 degrees, the sum of its cube and its squared is exactly 1 over 8. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. In this video, I'm going to present to you two methods to show that our given expression is really equal to 1 eighth. The first method is kind of treating the given expression like a polynomial about sine 18 degrees. So I'm going to take kind of take a common factor on the two terms, which is sine squared of 18 degrees multiplied by sine 18 degrees plus 1. Now at this point, I cannot proceed further because I'm adding a, trig a trigonometric ratio by 1, and that's not good looking. So I really want to cancel out this plus 1. So I need to come up with some kind of um, identities about trigonometry, which can, um, which is kind of involving uh, plus one or um, minus one, so that this can that particular minus one can cancel out with the one labeled in yellow. So the one that I'm going to use is the double angle identity of cosine, which is that cosine two theta equals two cosine square theta minus one kind of degenerating the angle. So uh, the reason that I picked this is that I can kind of relate a trigonometric ratio plus one with something that's simply product of constants and trigonometric ratios. Then if I can kind of rewrite sine of 18 degrees plus one into something like this, then my expression will simply be product of things. So to do this, I'm going to rewrite sine into cosine by making use of the fact that cosine theta equals sine of 90 degrees minus theta. Then using this, I can replace sine 18 by cosine 72. So in this case, I can make use of the fact that double angle equal two cosine squared minus one. And so taking theta equals 36, and I'm going to get two cosine squared 36 degrees. So if I kind of rearrange that, I will have this. To proceed even further, notice that with 18 and 36, which are double angles, so again, some kind of double angle identity might be useful, but now we are at products. So um, things related to products and double angle identities would be the double angle identity of sines, which says that sine of two theta in general is equal to two times sine times cosine. And that's very close to what we have right now. It's just that we are having squares of sine and cosine. So why not we square the identity, both sides of the identity, which, said, which is sine square of two theta equals four sine square theta cos square theta. And so that means 2 sine squared theta cos squared theta is half of sine squared 2 theta. Okay. Now after having this, we need to fix um, the angle that we're doing the sine and cosine on. Now because we have 18 and 36 and they are not equal, but they somehow can be uh, made um, to be equal because they are exactly double angles. So I'm going to multiply an extra cosine squared 18 degrees in between. 
but of course we can we can't we cannot simply multiply for three so we have to divide by cosine squared 80 degrees again making it like a fraction the reason that I do this is that now we have some equal angles and I can make use of the identity that I've just established and from this I can reach something um, on 36 degrees and then I can bring in the third part of the product so let's see how things go now this equal to sine squared of 36 degrees halved and then multiply by cosine squared 36 degrees over the cosine squared 18 degrees at the denominator. Now at this point, we again have two um, equal angles and I can make use of the identity again. Now from this, the numerator becomes a quarter of sine squared 72 degrees and then the whole thing divided by 2 cosine squared 18 degrees. So let's rearrange that. Now actually we are almost there. Sine squared 72 degrees over 8 cosine squared 18 degrees. Now recalling that we are actually aiming for 1 eighth and we have the um, desired 8 at the bottom of the fraction. So let's see whether these two things are really equal. And in fact they are, because again I can change back sine 72 into cos 18, making use of this identity. So Finally, it becomes cosine squared 18 degrees over 8 cosine squared 18 degrees, and that's 1 eighth. So we've established this relation. Now, just a quick remark before I move on to the second method is that for this plus 1 labeled in yellow for the second step, I can actually replace that by sine of 90 degrees and then we have two signs adding together so at this point you can also try to use the sum to product formula which says that sine a plus sine b in general is equal to 2 sine a plus b over 2 cos of a minus b over 2 so then this bracket will then equal to 2 sine 54 degrees cosine um, 18 minus 90 divided by 2 is minus 36 but we know that um, negative sign inside the cos is um, not really meaningful so it's just cos 36 degrees but then again we can use the uh, complementary angles identity and change it back to 2 cosine squared 36 degrees and it's this and then the steps afterwards will be just the same as we have done um, in red. Now we move on to my second method, and that is actually uh, this method. This method is actually more straightforward to me, which is by simply evaluating sine of eighteen degrees. Um, the reason the reason that I find this method straightforward is that it's really computable, and then it requires less thinking. So, for this. We can do the following. So I kind of um, let uh, theta equals 18 degrees. Then we know that if I double it, it's 36. If I triple it, it's 54. Pretty obvious. But the thing is, 2 theta and 3, th three theta are complementary angles. They add up to be 90. This is the key 
to find sine of 18 degrees because it's one fifth of a right angle. So two theta plus three theta equals 90 degrees. And so that means I have this fact because they're complementary. So cosine of sine of one, one of the angles will be cosine of the other. And I picked um, cosine two theta because this looks um, more like a polynomial and I can solve it with algebra. So let's see how things go. Now making use of the triple angle identity, I'll just skip the derivation. And in fact, it's three sine theta minus four sine cube theta. And then I'm going to make use of the sine version of the double angle of cosine, which is one minus two sine square theta. And so rearranging that a bit, I will have four sine cubed minus two sine squared minus three sine theta plus one equals zero. So at this point, to make sure that everyone can see that very clearly, I'm going to let x equal sine theta, then I have a polynomial here, 4x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. So at this point, we have a cubic polynomial. We can make use of the factor theorem, try to plug in some numbers, see if it's really equal to 0, and try to find some factors. So by looking at the coefficients, maybe you can quickly see that if I put x equals 1, and is zero. And just say note that x minus one is a factor. So I divide the cubic polynomial by this, and it's four x squared plus two x minus one. So that means I can solve for x. So x is either one or minus two plus or minus four, not four squared, but two squared. 2 squared minus 4 times 4 times minus 1 over double of 4, which is 8. And so by simplifying, we have minus 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 4. So this is x, and that's sine theta, and with that theta equals 18 degrees. And so I can replace this x at the bottom by sine 18 degrees. Now, it just remains to cancel out the, post, the some of the possible values. Well, it can't be 1 because sine 18 is just not 1. Sine, only sine 90 or added by a multiple of 2 pi or 30, 360 degrees is 1. So reject. And of course, sine 18 degrees is positive. So it cannot be, it cannot be minus 1 minus root 5 over 4. So kind of uh, rewrite the way I present the solution, reject the negative case. And so now I know that sine of 18 degrees equals minus one plus root five over four. So then I can try to calculate this by hand. Again, we have this. I can try to expand. Okay, so that's 18 plus 6 with 5 minus 6 with 5 and then minus uh, 10 over 64. And that is exactly 1 8. So again, we have proved this relation. And here are the two methods to show this relation. Uh, feel free to uh, write down your way to solve your way to justify this in your comments and I'll see you in the next video.